Welcome to Figma Bytes, the video series that aims to teach you to speed up your Figma workflow. On our menu today, we have interactive components. This scrumptious feature lets us bake interactivity into a component. This helps us create more realistic prototypes. Here's an overview of the three courses. First, we have these buttons built out with variants for each of its states. Second, we'll see these switches and toggle states. And finally, for dessert, we have a wonderful stack of list item states. It's time to make the first course. Let's hop over to the prototype tab in the right side panel and focus on our buttons. We'll connect the default button to the second one, which will be our hover state. In the interaction menu popover, change the first selection to while hovering. Then we can connect our hover to our last button and change our interaction to while pressing. You can also select variants in the dropdown. Let's prep course number two, which includes a bit of animation. Let's connect our two switches and have the interaction set to on click and our animation set to Smart Animate, Ease Out, at 150 milliseconds. Now we'll connect our On switch to the Off switch. The same animation settings should stay. Let's play our prototype. If we hover over the button and click, we can see the interaction. Clicking our switch should toggle it on with a smooth animation. We don't have anything ready for dessert yet, so let's go make some. Let's start by connecting our first list item to our second. Change our interaction to Mouse Enter. Connect our second one back to the first. Change its interaction to mouse leave. This creates a little hover interaction. Next, connect the second one to the third one as while pressing. You'll notice all of these default to the same animation settings as before. Let's see how this tastes. Go back into prototype mode and hover over our menu items. If we click on them, we see the animation. We really built up a nice interactive component here out of only a few pieces. Let's make our dessert a little more delectable. We can layer these interactive components into something a little more complex. Let's select our variant frame. Now go over to our design panel on the right, click the Variants Overflow menu, and select Add New Property. Let's name it Switch. What we're going to do here is make an option that has switches inside the list items. Make a copy of our list items, copy our switch, select all our arrows, right click and select Paste to Replace, which we cover in a different video as well, and put all our switches in there. If we switch back to the Prototype tab, our prototype interactions are copied as well. Let's make sure all of our variant properties are correct. Now if we go over to our prototype frame and toggle on the switch property, our prototype should now have the interaction. Let's check. We'll switch back to our prototype. We can individually click these, but what if we want each row to control the switch? Let's move back to our file and add another new variant property. Name it Selected and change the value to False. Let's copy all of our switch list states and turn the switches on by selecting each switch and toggling the switch property to on. Now we have variants for our selected state. Back in our prototype tab, we need to adjust our connections a bit. Let's take our third list item from our off switch variants and connect it to our second list item from our on switch variants. And since this is a toggle, let's make sure to connect our third list item from our on switch variants to our second list item from our off switch variants. Now if we move back to our prototype and click a list item, the switch toggles and all of our previously connected interactive states still work just fine. One thing that could happen is that someone may click one of these switches now and will end up in a strange state. Since these are nested components and each of them have their own interaction, we can end up in some interesting places. But let's fix that. Back in our file, we need to select each of our switches and turn the variant interaction off. Back in our prototype, our click interaction works like we want it to, and we can no longer get into that unintentional state from before. So, even though we can layer and nest these interactions, we need to check the variant interactions carefully so we don't end up in these types of places. That's how you work with interactive components. I hope this Figma Byte helps you integrate interesting interactions into infinite iterations. Thanks for watching.